Here's a fun one, because it brings up the whole can of worms for normies who don't get the character. For the Moon Knight counterpart, I have Israel in 2022. So, a lot of uninformed superhero fans will name Batman as the Moon Knight counterpart, which is simply not true in any form. Moon Knight has DID, is an avatar for the Egyptian moon god Khonshu, and freely murders people without a hint of hesitation. He also started off as a marine, and then became a mercenary, as well as having superpowers at one point, mainly starting out. And that's not Batman at all. The only similarities is that they're kind of dark, use their own themed throwing stars, and are billionaires, at least for one of the personalities of Moon Knight. However, someone who does fit into all of those outside of the billionaire part is Jean-Paul Valley. He would become Batman during the famous Nightfall arc and then become the character known as Azrael. He definitely fits the character of Moon Knight almost to a T, being way more brutal and openly murders people, is connected to some sort of religion, Christianity slash the Order of Saint Dumas rather than Egyptian mythology, has... DID, and at one point had enhanced abilities. I don't know if he still does in the current continuity, though. So with this, Azrael is DC's Moon Knight, not Batman. So fucking stop saying it. Due to the relatively small cast, this should be pretty easy. Jean-Paul Valley would be played by Alexander Ludwig. The Layla L. Fiuli counterpart would be a character named Lily, as that was the only person I could find that was maybe closest to a love interest for Jean-Paul Valley. She would become a character named Samaritan by the end of the series. She would be played by Mae Callumway. The voice of Khonshu would become the voice of Azrael, the actual angel of death in Jean-Paul Valley's head, played by F. Murray Abraham. For the villain of Arthur Harrow, I decided decided on Ludovic Valley, Jean-Paul Valley's father, because Harrow in the show was the avatar of Khonshu previously, and Ludovic was the Israel before Jean-Paul Valley. However, he died, so Jean-Paul Valley took over the mantle. Well, here it's revealed that he didn't die and wants his title back as he thinks that his son has tainted the title and is unworthy. He would be played by Ethan Hawke. Then finally, for the character of Anton Mogar, I think that's how you pronounce it, also known as Midnight Man, I decided on Michael Lane, who would later become another version of Azrael. He would be played by Rob Brown. Next up is the Miss Marvel counterpart, and I can go a lot of different ways with this, but I ultimately decided on Mary Marvel in 2022. Since Captain Marvel is under both DC and Marvel, might as well stick with those characters for the spinoff. It seemed like the most obvious choice was Mary Marvel since I used the pre-New 52 version in the DCCU. So even though the superhero version of Darla Dudley, who still has yet to have a superhero name, would fit into the Kamala Khan version of Miss Marvel a lot better for various reasons, I am sticking with the continuity I set up since this sets up the Captain Marvel sequel at least partly. So, Mary Marvel it is. We would have Brie Larson coming back as Mary Marvel, and then Anne Gory Rice coming back as Mary Bromfield. Then for other characters, I have Bianca and Cassidy, friends of Mary, being counterparts for Bruno and Nakia, played by Celia Rose Gooding. Then for Amir Khan, I thought it would make sense to have Freddie Freeman in there in a rather small role, still played by Jacob Tremblay. Then for the villains, instead of Damage Control, I have the DSI, also known as the Department of Scientific Investigation, which is close enough to Damage Control. Get Any Random Agent, played by Arian Moyed, probably pronouncing that wrong. I apologize. Then for the character of Red Dagger, I thought Jakeem Thunder would be cool to include since he fits into this world of magic that the Marvel family possesses here. He would be played by Alex Hibbert. Then we have the counterparts for her parents. Since we're going for more of the pre-New 52 feel with this iteration, I decided on the Bromfields rather than the Vasquezes, who would be Nick and Nora, insert infinite playlist joke here, played by Ethan Embry and Linda Cardellini. Next Next is a pretty loose one, but it brings back a character counterpart from a while ago, kind of. She-Hulk attorney at law's counterpart is Miss Martian in 2022. Since Hulk is our Martian Manhunter counterpart, might as well make the counterpart for She-Hulk, the female version, quote unquote, of Hulk, the female version of Martian Manhunter with 
Miss Martian. I feel that makes sense with the continuity I set up, so let's move on to casting. Miss Martian would be played by Tatiana Maslany, and Martian Manhunter would return, played by Ruffalo. Then Titania would become Decay Duraz, played by Jamila Jamil. Nakia Ramos would become Sissy King Jones, played by Amanda Seyfried. Pug Puglies would become Victor Stone, still played by John Boyega. Maalefek would return, played by Edward Norton. Mallory Book would become Bombshell, played by Renee Elise Goldsberry. Dr. Midnight would still be played by Charlie Cox. And finally, I decided that Hulk King would become Prometheus, played by Josh Sagara. Couldn't really find a good counterpart for that, so I decided on Prometheus, considering that's who Sagara played on Arrow. Just a funny little in-joke is all. But I don't want to think about this shit show more than I want to, so please, let's move on. Another pretty loose one, but it is again the closest I could possibly do for a counterpart. Secret Invasion now becomes Invasion in 2023. The only thing that these have in common is that there is an alien invasion involving weird looking brightly colored aliens but hey the adaptation of secret invasion has as much to do with secret invasion as dc's invasion does anyway so it's whatever what i wanted to do was have the protagonists be human characters seeing these aliens invade because i feel like that would be pretty interesting to have a very human reaction to an invasion like how nick fury is the protagonist of the miniseries so the characters that would be the protagonists would be amanda waller still played by angela bassett wade eiling played by dermot mulroney lex luther still played by hugo weaving and maxwell lord still played by david Tennant. due to this version premiering in cameron chase and that version being more in line with the later version of the character while this is more representative of the original version of the character because it obviously happened before in the comics so i'm gonna tie it into the fact that he was under some sort of mind control maybe from the alien invaders but he somehow broke out of it now he's just a douchey rich guy just like the original incarnation so you have all these different perspectives on how to react to the alien menace you have eiling who just wants to obliterate them you have waller who just wants to defend the earth from them but for her own personal Amanda Waller-like reasons. Same with Luther. And then you have Lord, who wants to use whatever power they have against them, but maybe not necessarily just kill them all. Obviously, heroes would appear in this series, and they would be the Omega Men, with all the characters from the previous film returning, Firestorm, the Jason Rush version, played by Kingsley Ben-Adir, Blue Beetle, the Ted Kord version, played by Jason Sudeikis, Booster Gold, played by Sean William Scott, Fire and Ice, played by Isis Valverde and Josephine Frieda Pedersen. Guy Gardner, played by Alan Richson. Creeper, played by Will Arnett. Hawkman, still played by Jake Gyllenhaal. Hawk Woman, played by Amelia Clark. Martian Manhunter, still played by Mark Ruffalo. Dead Man, played by Ben Mendelsohn. And Superman, still played by Matt Bomer. The alien invaders would be brought down to just three, with it being the Dominators, the Daxamites, and the Thanagarians. The Daxamites would then help humanity to defeat the other two races, and they all win with maybe some deaths on the good side. I don't know what those would be, but whatever they are would work. Move on. Next one should be easy, since this is a spinoff. The Echo counterpart I chose... Kasumi in 2024. If you don't know, this was one of the many names of the fan favorite character Cassandra Kane, who appeared in Green Arrow. With the title, I decided to use the first superhero name she used that wasn't Batgirl, which was Kasumi. Black Bat and Orphan could also be used, but Kasumi sounded the coolest, so I went with that. Way back when I was going show by show, I originally had the DC Comics version of Echo here, but considering she was a character that barely appeared and was a counterpart in name only, I decided to to find another hero. When doing Green Arrow, I thought Cassandra Kane was a really good fit because she could be utilized pretty well here, but also handle her own spinoff as I mentioned. So let's get right into it. Riley Leigh Nillette would return as Cassandra Kane, obviously. Then for the main villain, I would have another combined character like last time. This time, Kingpin is the main villain, and I decided to combine him with family member Black Crow to have David Kane as the main villain of the series, still played by Stephen Lang. Since at this point, it seems like the Netflix shows are canonical, might as well use them here. Forgot to mention that with David Tennant as Maxwell Lord. Speaking of, then I would have the Chula counterpart, kinda, with Lady Shiva, still played by Kelly Hu. Daredevil would be replaced with Batman, still played by Kyle Chandler. Even though Dr. Midnight would be the proper character, Batman man made more sense and they still have that similarity. Bonnie would become Brenda Miller played by Melina Weissman. The character of Biscuits would be split into two people. Jeffers 
and John Robinson, played by Lance Gross. Through them, Kane would gain an interest to learn how to talk, read, and write. Then finally, for the character of Scully, their counterpart would be Alfred, as that would make the most sense, and he would still be played by Jeffrey Rush. Finally, and I mean finally, we have the Agatha, now with no subtitle, counterpart with Madame Xanadu in 2024. Since Madame Xanadu appeared in Zatanna, I split the character of Agatha into the main villain and her. I opted for her to have the spinoff. Plus, in the comics, Agatha is a straight-up good guy, much like Xanadu. Plus, I like the character, and she still has yet to be properly adapted. The version in Swamp Thing was alright, but not great. Since this is mainly casting and not really plot, I don't have to worry about the lack of plot here. Gillian Anderson would return to play Madame Xanadu. Then, for other counterparts, there is Rio Vidal, who would become Marisol Del Rios, played by Aubrey Plaza. Billy Kaplan would become Charlotte Blackwood, a pupil of Xanadu, played by McKenna Grace. Lilia Caldrew, who would become the Spectre, played by Tony Curran. Jennifer Kale would become Raven, played by Chloe Grace Moretz. Since in this case, Cloak and Dagger is no longer canon to the MCU, Raven and Starfire is no longer canon to the DCCU. So we get a recast. Alice would become Tracy 13, and then finally, the Hulkling counterpart would be Beast Boy, played by Miles Gutierrez Riley. Since both are green shapeshifters, I thought that would work and have a connection to Raven, who is another character here, and they would be romantically involved to include the romance connection that Billy and Hulkling would have in the actual show. Well... We're not quite done yet. We still have a little bit extra, but the main stuff is done. In order to give you guys something a bit extra though, there are still plenty of shows that are currently in production. I wanted to pretty much rapid fire those counterparts at what I think the best counterpart would be. However, things change, things get canceled, and who knows if all of these will actually be produced. Since nothing is known about them, I'm just gonna quickly give a title, my explanation, and that's kinda it. These are all the shows that will be produced as of March 10th, 2024. Again, things change, so please keep that in mind. First, we have Eyes of Wakanda, a series about the history of Wakanda and how it became the country it is today in the MCU. The best counterpart I can think of, going back to the Aquaman similarities, I thought the Atlantis Chronicles would probably be the best course of action. It was sort of an underwater Game of Thrones back in the 90s. Apparently it was good, but a friend of mine hates it, so I don't know how good it actually is. But that is sort of the best idea I have, and it would simply adapt that. Then for the Your Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man counterpart, I thought Impulse would be the best course of action, while it could just be another show focusing on the main Flash at this point, Wally West, in a multiverse sense, like the show is doing with Peter, I decided to include yet another Flash family member with Impulse. Because with how they're doing this show, I thought Impulse fit. Plus, he's a great character that doesn't get a ton of time to shine. We then have Daredevil Born Again, and that would become Doctor Midnight Reborn. Pretty simple. Gonna either be a continuation of the original show or a soft reboot. No idea with how they're gonna be doing it at this point, but simple enough. Next up is Ironheart, and with our history in terms of the Iron Man character, I thought Batgirl was a good counterpart for that. She is sort of that fun, quirky character character that Batgirl is in many ways and is also extremely intelligent. I was originally going to go with Batwoman, but I thought that Batgirl fit better in terms of personality. This show is in post-production, so I could have moved it up with everything else, but it doesn't have a release date, so I had to put it down here with the other things that were either in development, production, or filming. Then for the untitled Wakanda series counterpart, I will go with an untitled Atlantis series. Since we know nothing about this series other than it's a Black Panther, spinoff, I'll just leave this here. Then for the Marvel Zombies counterpart, the most obvious choice would be Deceased, since that was the basis for the original episode, so we'll be expanding upon it here just like they are. Now we have the Wonder Man counterpart, and since the closest thing to that character would be Superman, I decided to go into a different direction with Captain Comet. Wonder Man is a character that kinda has every power. While Superman does have a lot of powers, Captain Comet almost puts him to shame. Same with Wonder Man having a laundry list of powers. I know there's probably a better counterpart out there that isn't Superman, especially a character that has gone from villain to hero. But but I'm not hugely familiar with Wonder Man, so we'll just have to settle for this. Next is the Nova series counterpart, and it's a pretty obvious one with Green Lantern. Nova Corps is a clear ripoff of Green Lantern Corps 
So boom, there you go. Finally, we have Vision Quest about White Vision and its counterpart would probably be Cyborg. Both are robotic characters with a grab bag amount of technological powers. It works. Plus, Vision Quest would be a spinoff of WandaVision, but none of those characters in Zatanna fit Vision Quest. So that's why I put Cyborg into Miss Martian so that he can set up his own spinoff. Shut up, it works. But that is it for the DCCU shows. Next up are the DC-turned Marvel shows, starting out with the Marvel version of the Arrowverse. 